All right, up here at the top left, the chosen one, the best Protoss he is. Alicia. He's not necessarily the best Protoss, I was just saying that. <laughs> Came from Finland. Always good to see foreign fans come from around the world here to the Mokdong studio. His opponent also spawning as Protoss from a random. You might want to test some stuff out on him if he's on your team. He is. MVP genius. Um, guinea pig. Guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's interesting. His name is Guinea Pig, which if you think about, it's kind of interesting because if you have a random player on your team. He can, you can test all sorts of builds on him, man. He's your guinea pig. <laughs> so, obviously, we do have a super fast scout from Alicia. He's got to know what's going on. He has to pile on scout on a map this really size. lucky at the moment, too. Yeah, fortunately for him, he's going to run into this cross right at the start. A lot of clapping going on in the, in the crowd. Very pleased about how this worked out. It's actually very important to know in PvP. If you don't know it's PvP until the last base, when you're playing against a random player, Things get nasty. You can hit, go into a build order loss ju just that early as well, um, especially on Taldarim, it's such a large map. Hold that thought. No gas. He's getting his gas really late. That's bad. That's extremely bad. So that gas has been mining for a long time for Guinea Pig. I thought maybe he was going to try to two gate, but that's almost impossible to do on the map of this size. So do you think that was a mistake, or do you think it was more of a, a long-term game plan? I don't know. He's made his... For his second pylon way early, I think it was a mistake. You always, always, always make the gas before the second pylon. Always in PvP, and he saw it. Yeah, maybe his nerves getting to him a little bit. That's huge. I wouldn't say nerves, I'd be I'd say worried about what race it is. Right. So a little bit of probe harassment here going on. PvP this happens a lot. Now if you guys I don't know if you guys can quite see, but the Chrono Boost has been saved up tremendously for Guinea Pig. He's already up to 62 energy, yep. and he looks to be using all of it on his Warp Gate research. Yep. And that can mean multiple things. Sometimes it means that you're going to be going for a 4 gate. Sometimes it means you're not 4 gate. You just want to make sure you have those units out really fast, so if your opponent 4 gates, you'll be ready. Neither player comfortably taking a second gas just yet. Looks like Guinea Pig scouting around. It looks like uh, Alicia Zealot is making a beeline for his base here. Maybe he's checking the middle of the map for any kind of proxies. Yeah, I think he just wants to check and be sure. Mm -hmm. Now, something interesting to note about this map is the terrain really lends itself to poor gating. There's no real defined ramp. The only ramp that there is is far away from the main, and it's wide open, so it's very easy to poor gate on this map. If you try to skip the four gate and do something like a three stalker rush, you better hope that you find that pylon, or you're gonna lose. <laughs> yeah, very remin reminiscent of Scrap Station. Very, very reminiscent of Scrap Station. That's a good point. And oh! The probe is found, but the zealot is found as well. Can't it get away from Silica, buddy. Oh, no way. Uh, is that zealot <laughs> going home tonight? So both players actually... MVP Guinea Pig actually just adding his second gate right now. And back at the base of Alicia, he's actually added two gates. Yep. Zealot does get taken out there. So, so he, he was trying to get a bit more information before he died. Yeah, just wanted to make sure he knew what was going on. So it's going to be a three stalker rush coming out for Alicia, and finally the third gate going up for Guinea Pig. Very risky to stick with just two gates. Both players have taken both of their gases. Alicia actually has an idle probe in his main. And oh, that idle probe. We'll get a shot of it in a second. As these stalkers do battle in the middle of the map. You'll have a twilight cancel. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. As we get a shot of it in a second. Jeez, too I'm slow, stable. too slow. Stop spoiling everything. <laughs> um, so both players are actually making twilight councils right now. So this should be quite interesting. Both players going for a three-gate blink stalker build. Could be DTs, which would be even more interesting. It's like DTs versus DTs. Like, what do you do? <laughs> they like see each other, but they're like, I can't see you, but I see you. <laughs> and in fact, that Twilight Council is finished, but it looks like it is going to be blink. Bleach is a little bit further ahead in that, though. Even though he did get his gas later. I like this aggressiveness, but he has to be very careful. Oh! And he will oh, almost lost one of those stalkers. Now, he made two sentries, and making sentries in PvP is almost always a bad idea, especially on this particular map, because they do very little DPS, and that's really going to allow Alicia to have the better hand, the better cards, when he comes in with his first round of stalkers. He's going to have more of them. The sentries aren't really going to do a lot. Try to force field. Not only is it really wide open, but he has blink, man. He can blink over those force fields. 
Yeah, but, oh, yeah, he's getting caught out of position yet again. He will, will he lose this stalker? I think he will. No. Fine, make a liar out of me. <laughs> So right now, Alicia has started a forward pile in the middle of the map. He's starting to join up his Stalker forces. His blink is going to be done a little bit faster. As far as Stalker counts goes, both players with seven Stalkers at the moment. But here we go. Zelda's running forward. And actually a little bit Whoa. weird micro from Guinea Pig. Alicia Zelda's getting taking a lot of damage. Yeah, Alicia taking the very wrong end of that engagement there. Guinea Pig running past the Zealots straight into the Stalkers to focus them down one at a time. More Zealots being warped in, but that trade was completely one-sided. Yeah, and, and I mean, I hate to say it, that's GG. game. GG. GG. Done. That's it, man. You mess that up, and the game just ends. Yeah, that is what MVP needed. That is exactly what MVP needed. Alicia, he hasn't been doing uh, too well in PvP in the games I've seen him play. I've seen some players play him on the ladder. He hasn't done well there either. And uh, I gotta say, that really worked out for MVP. Guinea Pig getting the high fives, bringing his team back into this. Always good to see that spirit. Now, a lot of that came down to really weird stuff. Like, yeah. Alicia having his stalkers in a weird spot, you don't really need to do that, especially when you see your opponent have a lot more stalkers and you're kind of, you don't have your stalkers joined up yet. Because stalkers do really well against stalkers. It's just, it's just how the game is. So if you have one more stalker than your opponent, the battle swings in your favor. Yep. And oh, look at that. Guinea Pig gonna give a shirt out to one of the, someone in the crowd. Oh, lucky guy. That's what, what I'm talking saying? about. You yeah. come here, an MVP player, man, he'll give you a shirt. So, who do we think we're gonna a, see next? That was just kind of a weird game. Um, it was textbook in that it's a really common build to see from both players. It was just weird, and Alicia felt a little bit nervous. I could tell his control was a little iffy. And I thought he was going to get the better hand of that because he had a pretty decent position as well as in the right spot, but he just didn't micro stalkers at all. I think he was caught off guard looking at his base or something like that yeah. when that attack came in because that can really... Yeah, we're both looking at that going, I think he's got this. And uh, in fact, at that moment, Guinea Pig was supply blocked at 50 out of 50. So I was like, he can't even get any more units. This is going to be really good. And then he and must then have, that like said, maybe he was making a pile on his base or something and just didn't micro and lost all of his units. His blink was done. It's PvP. Didn't use it. <laughs> PvP, man. All right, so who do you think we're going to see next from Slayers? I don't know. Maybe Slayers Min. Min? I think Min is just a really strong player overall. He's shown really strong play in all the matchups. DBZ is maybe one of his weaker ones, but even so, he's a great player, I think, to send out against a random. Yeah. What do you think? I think Min is a good choice. Uh, I also think Ryong. Ryong also really strong, I agree. Mm. I don't think we'll see MMA until uh, no. until the last last match. I think they're going to keep him in as an anchor. Yeah, MMA and Gonzi probably won't see either of those players. Um, not, not until later, at least. Yeah, because you always want to save some of your stronger players to the end. Mm -hmm. So if something crazy happens and you really just need that guy to push all the way through, it can happen. Yep. You guys have seen that a lot in the team league, I'm sure. You see MVP at the end of IM's roster a lot. July Zerg sometimes pulling up the end of Startail. It's just how it is sometimes. At the same time, you can flip that around and put one of your very strong players up first to get your team a really strong lead at the first. Exactly. After that. So we are going to join the map. It is going to be Zelnaga Caverns. Who's going to be our player? Who is it? And oh, I think he's that's Ryong. Looking off the screen. I can't see it, but I'm pretty sure it's Ryong. not facing the camera. It is Ryong. I can tell. Oh! oh player's boxer! Oh! oh, it's a fake! <laughs> what? The Emperor himself! Oh, I think things just got a little bit more tense in this room. Yeah, I'm just like, we can't see his face, and then it was like, no, it's just Emperor himself! <laughs> <laughs> and MVP, MVP coach. coach is like, all right, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. I see what okay. you're doing now. Bring it. That's really interesting. I, I yeah. can't stress to you enough how much Boxer does for this team other than just playing. Mm. He does so many things, and he's been struggling recently. I know it's... it's Bad to talk bad about the Emperor, but he hasn't been doing as well recently as he has in the past. Well, you can only do so much in, in a day. Exactly. And but so, he's this getting shows, me excited, man. This shows that he's really been training hard for this, and I'm impressed with him. I'm really happy. I'm so excited. This I is my first time casting Boxer at the GSL. <laughs> and uh, Guinea Pig, you know, it depends on how he looks at Boxer. If he's a Boxer fanboy, he's watched Boxer since he was a kid, maybe it's going to be a little weird for him. Yep. But on the other hand, if he feels like Boxer's been slumping recently and he hasn't been doing as well because he just does so much stuff, it might allow him to feel a little bit more confident. So this is a nice little card to play, I think. I'm, when I look at that kind of situation, I think you have to give credit where credit's due. 
and not over underestimate someone. Exactly. That is the absolute worst possible thing you could do in any matchup. Exactly. So I don't think that Guinea Pig is going to look at this as like, oh, psh, easy. Boxer actually, even though he hasn't shown that many results, he's still a top, top player. If you guys have seen him play in other leagues as well, other than the GSL, and he shows some good games through the even through the latency sometimes. It's like we were saying uh, earlier about the Kodak qualifiers, just because you don't have that extra push in a GSL does not mean you're a weak player whatsoever. I saw Atlanta, Georgia mentioned on that sign. That's actually where I'm from. All right, we're going to take a two-minute break. When we get back, the Emperor versus Guinea Pig.